I do this for a living. I do an awful lot of this. I do a lot more project management now, way more project management than I do development. I do um, way more project management in this kind of economy than I do in other kinds of economies. Why is that? Oh, oh, that that were so. Control expenses. Um, yeah, people want people want people are everybody's holding on to their pennies a little harder right now, right? Everybody wants to know what they're getting, and people are coming to you going, "Well, didn't this come with it? And how come?" And so on and so forth. Project management is really about one word. What's the word? Risk. Control. Managing expectations. It's not one word. <laughs> <laughs> if I said one sentence, that's exactly what I would say. Confidence. No. This communication, it's all it's about. Um, it's funny because I've got a crew of guys, and you know, back in the day when I was a young developer, I used to sit there and, you know, A, any job was, I have to, 11, 15, John? Mike, or John? Yes. Any job was a good job, and any customer request was a valid one, and any price they wanted to throw at me was sort of okay, and as I got more and more experience and so forth, I'm not. So, one of the things that um, I have found about you as a project manager is, A, listen very effectively. Okay? If you're going to do a project justice, listen to the customer. What's the number one thing we want to know about the customer? From the last session? What's their vision? What's their vision? What are you guys trying to accomplish? And just keep listening to that inside your head. If I've got the boss's idea of... We want to be the leader in police marketing apparel, and we want to do it as automated as possible. If I'm sitting down with one of his managers, I go, Lou, back in the office, said he really wants to get as much automation as possible. I see you doing this process. I want to bring that. To, I want to bring some automation to that. I can bring the boss's culture to everything that I'm doing. Listen. Obviously, if you're going to be a good developer and you do the design and so forth effectively, do I have to be the designer to be a good project manager? Lee, you worked on a couple of big jobs with the Salani guys over the years. Is project manager and the developer and the designer always the same guy? Not even close. Not even close. On the big jobs, way too much stuff to handle. This can be, the project manager can be a full-time job on a big, giant project. Okay? So listen, understand, right? Understand what the goals are. And, and more specifically, and then, you know, obviously there's a game plan, right? So we've understood maybe the developer or the designer has said, here's what the game plan is, and here's what the spec is from this part. I have to understand that as a project manager. I also have to understand what the customer's needs are. So I have two separate things that I'm converging on, the need of the customer and what the developer is going to try to do. And then what? Set the expectations. Biggest part, and that's what, what um, Alan was saying, biggest part of the job is setting the expectations. You have to be, I think, you have to, um, you don't have to be mean about it, you don't have to be um, aggressive about it, but I think one of the things that makes my project management skills work for me is that you have to just put on this shield in your chest and go, I'm going to say what needs to be said. I'm going to say we can't build this system in two weeks. It's going to be too quick. I'm going to say this needs to be in phase two because it's aggressive for this. I'm going to say to my developer, that portal is wanking looking. We need to make it look better. I'm going to set those expectations. You have to call what, if you listen to what the goals are, if you understand what everything needs to be, you need to set those expectations. If you set that course early, just like steering a big ship with a bunch of rowers. You're gonna, and you got a bunch of rowers on a big project, there's a lot of rowers, you're moving really quickly. And if you set your chart, your course on the horizon, and say, we're going this way, and everybody is pulling at the oars, you're gonna get there really well. And if you don't, if there are course corrections, if you let some guy go off into the corner and do something, you're gonna start going this way, and you're gonna start veering. Or if the customer says, hey, we also wanna add this new thing, and that gets you off course. And the developer says, well, this is getting really hard, we've gotta find another way. You've got to grapple with those things and keep setting the expectations.
Is that something that you have to do once during the project? No. no. You have to do it a lot. You have to do it a lot. And you have to see what those things are, compare them against what the goals are, understand is this going to be a good thing or a bad thing, and set those expectations. Guys, customer said they need this. Um, they added this one little thing. It's going to push the deadline back a week or two. If you call it off early and say it out loud, everybody goes, okay. Um, and, but if you don't, you're going to pay the price later, right? Under promise, over deliver, right? Under promise, over deliver. I think we can get that done in the next two weeks. I'll let you know. Not, oh, we can do that tomorrow, or I'll get right on that, right? Give yourself room to, to breathe. Give the customer room to understand what you're going through, but mostly communicate. Questions? What are some things that you can do um, to help communicate? Put it in writing. Put stuff in writing. Like what, what kind of stuff would you put in writing? Um, I think agreements about um, what phases you're going to reach by what time, um, what, what the pieces are of yep. the project. Yep. And you can do. To be honest, I mean, in terms of writing, you can do the writing of that, right? I understand that you guys need a system that keeps track of the Olympic ski team and has this type of stuff, right? That's just the same. I understand that you need that. I can set the expectations. We think we'll be able to deliver. Um, so the deliverables, I think we're going to be able to give you a system that's going to allow you to track multiple events, multiple races, multiple skiers at those races. Um, now, the fun part is when you tie that to a timeline, and that's yeah. where you have to be you know, cautious. Where When you're sitting there doing, again, your start and your finish, and you go, this has to be here, and the next one has to be here, you've got to be cautious there. And again, that's another reason why, if this is done properly, the more detail you got to do on that, the more you know about how much work is going to be involved in each of these pages. If you're doing something like an agile design, you don't, by, by virtue of the fact that you're absorbing stuff in a smaller fashion, you're going, we know we want to get you here, we think it's going to be here, we think it's here, but you're allowing yourself course changes that, that come up, and it is more flexible that way, but it also has to have a more flexible schedule. Would you agree with that, Luke? That Agile design, I mean, can you build better software with Agile design? In certain situations, you absolutely can because you allow yourself time for course corrections. Do you also, can you tie Agile design to as an aggressive of a timeline as other types of methods? Probably not, right? It's probably not, not beneficial in that respect. So, what are some other things to a project manager? Dave? You can act as a, a referee for internal discussions to get back and forth. And establish yourself as the authority. That's so right. As, as something unfolds, hijacking the email thread and saying, okay, we have four or five people interacting here. This is what I hear. And then you get a response back and forth from everyone that that's it. That's the end of the thread. That's right. There is, there is absolutely to be a big project manager. And this is the hard part. I have done both, where I'm the developer and the project manager. There are times as the project manager that you have to throw yourself in front of the arrows that are coming. And that has to be either from the customer standpoint, you got to just stand there and go, my developer's getting really pissed off. And you got to stick them up there and go, okay, developer, get pissed at me, blow some steam at me. Now i got to go back to the customer and i got to say, hey, we have this problem. You guys are getting into some scope creep. You know, this is getting difficult. He's already laid the concrete. It's starting to dry. And now you guys need some changes. We need to know about this stuff earlier. That's one way that you need to have that thick skin. The, the second part is what Dave is talking about internally. We've got two developers working on the project. I've got to sit there and go, I really need you to get the layouts done so that he can get the scripts done. You know, or, you know, Betty and Billy is asking for this crazy thing and it's in conflict with Sally and orders. And that's not going to be as good of a, you know, we're having some issues there. So a lot of the time you have to step in and be that political officer and kind of weigh things. And you have to be very... Conscious again. Listen, I understand, Betty, that you have this need. That's, that's absolutely correct. I understand 